Well, hello, welcome again to our reading of the Greek New Testament. I'm just reading through Colossians, and I got up to the beginning of chapter 2. So once again, I'm just going to read through this. You will need a commentary to uh, assist you with the theology and with some of the more complex ideas here. And also, you might like to compare different translations of the Greek. So Thelaga humas e denai helikon agona eko hupe humon kaiton en leodikea kai hosoi uk hirakan top prosopon mu en saki. I might just pause it there because it's a long, another long sentence here. Uh, for I wish you, and then Adonai is the infinitive from oida. I wish you to know, Helikon, Helikos is an adjective meaning how great. So how great an agona, a struggle, cognate with our word agony, and was originally referred to a, a fight or a struggle. It's a, a military um, sporting term. It, it means a contest or a struggle. So I wish you to know how great a struggle I have. Uh, Hupa humon on your behalf and on behalf of those in Laodicea. And as many people, because it's a, a nominative masculine here, and as many as have not seen my face and Saki in the flesh. The verb here is hirakan. The ending you may see is slightly odd. It's the perfect from horao. You would normally get in the plural kasin. The kan ending is an Alexandrian form. You will see it in the Septuagint and elsewhere. It's an alternative for the kasin form. I'm not sure what can be made of it here in this work, but anyway, that's what it is. It's the third person plural perfect from horao. So as many as have not seen my face in the flesh, hina, in order that, uh, hai, uh, so hina paraklethosin hai kardiai auton sum bibastentes in agape kai es pan plutos tes pleroforias tes sum esios es epignosin tu maturiu to Theo Christu, en hoe sin pantes hoi thesauroi te sophias kai gnosios apocryphoi. So in order that their hearts may be consoled, this is a aorist passive subjunctive from parakalio um, to, and it's passive here, so probably console, encourage, so in order that their hearts might be consoled or encouraged, sum bibastente is another aorist passive participle from sum bibasdo, uh, meaning to bring together or put together or unite. So it's passive here. So having been united or joined together in love and, and we get ace, uh, so you could just say into, but in and ace are often fairly interchangeable in later Greek and in New Testament Greek. So you get to believe in can be either in or ace or that epi or even just a dative. But in and ace are often interchangeable in this later form. In fact, I think ace was originally ens. It was a fo it was ace was formed from n and. The two are often used in Biblical Greek in, interchangeably. So it may be, there may be some point of having both of them here, so I'll translate it more literally. So in order that their hearts might be consoled or encouraged, having been united in love and into or all the wealth, the pan plutos, this is a neuter noun, so you get the neuter pan here, uh, all the wealth of the pleroforias. This is a funny word. It means something like full assurance, conviction, certainty. Uh, it occurs a few times in the New Testament, 
but it's not found elsewhere uh, except in later ecclesiastical writings. So it's a fairly rare word here, although the roots are fairly clear. So something like full assurance or conviction or certainty, tes sun esios, this is from sun esis, the declension feminine noun, formed from sun hiemi, to understand, and then the abstract sun esis, understanding. So in, the, in all the wealth of the certainty of, un, of the understanding, and then we get another ace into the knowledge, or perhaps full knowledge, epignosin, of the mystery of God. And I think the Christu, and there are variant readings here, there's some have Kai in the middle, there's variant, various different uh, variant readings here. Uh, I think as it stands, this must be going with the Mosteriu. So into the full knowledge of the mystery of God, and the mystery is Christ. I think that's the sense of the Greek there. In hoie simpantes hoi thesaroi, so in which all the, oh, sorry, in which are all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge, uh, so we have to hold the R. So the in which all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge are apocryphoi uh, are hidden, or hidden away. The this word is cognate with our word thesaurus, which is a treasury of words, and apocryphoi connected with apocrypto is the verb to hide away. Um, the word apocrypha connected with this things which are hidden away. So, in which all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge are hidden away. Tuto lego hinamedes humas paralogizdetai in pithanologia. For I say this in order that no one, now we get may because we've got a subjunctive here after hina, in order that no one Paralogistomai is, uh, it's only here and in the epistle of James, I think 122 in the New Testament, but it's frequent in the Septuagint and in later writers. It means to misconstrue, to delude. Uh, it's, it's to reckon uh, contrary to something, so, or beside something, so it has, has the sense of misconstrue or delude. So, in order that no one might delude you with pithanologia, this is an interesting word, it's a classical word, it does occur in Plato. The pithanos is, has the sense of persuasiveness, and the logia, of course, argument. So, this means plausible arguments or persuasive speech, persuasive language. And the N is instrumental here, so with. So I say this in order that no one might lead you astray or might misconstrue or perhaps delude you with uh, plausible arguments or persuasive speech. Ega kai te saki apaimi ala to pneumati sun humin aimi chiron kai blepon humon ten taxin Kai tosterioma tes en Christon pistios humon. For if, so it's even if, we've got a chi here, so even if, mustn't forget our chi's, even if I am absent, teisaki in the flesh, uh, now the Greek says but, we would say nevertheless almost, I think in English, but it just says but I am uh, understand. Uh, with you, no, sorry, I am with you, to pneumati, in spirit. Rejoicing and seeing, ten taxing. Taxus is a funny word, it, 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 it's a military term meaning arrangement or order or good order. It's used in a military sense of the soldiers being in formation and so on. So, rejoicing and seeing your good order, and the stereoma, I think this is another one of these um, 
military terms, meaning firmness or steadfastness, it, it has the sense of solidness. Stereos is solid. So your solidity, your firmness, your steadfastness. Um, so the steadfastness of your faith, and then we get ace Christian. Well, it's either with regard to the Messiah or in the Messiah. As I mentioned, ace and n often interchangeable. Hos un paralabeti ton Christon Iesun ton curion en auto peripatete eris dominoi kai ep oiko domu menoi en auto kai bebai u menoi te piste cathos edidacthete perisuantes en eucharistia. When, therefore, you received, erist from Paralambano, the Messiah Jesus, notice the word order again, we get Christon Yesun, uh, the Lord, uh, Peripatete, I don't think this is imperative, uh, I think it's just you, uh, are in, you are walking in him. So when, therefore, you received the uh, the Christ Jesus as the Lord, you are walking in Him. Uh, it could be imperative, uh, walk in Him. This is this peripatia I've mentioned before, in the sense of to conduct yourself. Eridzomenoi, this is from rizdo'o, is the verb. It's an omicron contract verb. This is the perfect passive participle here. So with a row in the front, you don't get you get a reduplication, you doubling of the row from riz.o. So it means rooted, and ep oikodomu menoi. Another part of, this is a uh, present participle. Uh, so it has the sense of to um, being built. Uh, it's from oikodomio is to build, epi upon. So built, and we get in outer. So it's um, rooted. And I think it's translated as grounded. It's the usual word, but it means built up in Him. Kai bebai umenoi. This is another present participle. The verb is bebai oo. It's an omicron contract verb. Uh, the verb itself bebai oo is probably a reduplicated present. Probably haven't come across these much in New Testament Greek. They're very common in Homeric Greek. Uh, so it probably would have begun life. The, you, you get the bios, but you also get the, um, the form bios. It's a very old word, I think. So the, the redu this is a, originally a present reduplication, I think. So th this is a present participle, is what I'm saying, not a perfect one here. So it means um, uh, secured. Uh, so it's um, so rooted and built in him and secured in the faith as just as edictate this is the aorist passive from didasco as you were taught perisuantes abounding in eucharistia in um, thanksgiving blepete now this is, it means look, this is an imperative here, so it's almost like our be careful, to look out. May, lest, uh, uh, so blepidi may tis humas estai ha sul agogogon dia tes philosophias kai kenes partes kataten paradosin ton anthropon katata stoikea to cosmu so beware lest someone, lest there be, this is esti, this is the future, so lest there will be a certain person, the one sul alagogo, now this is a funny word here, it's, uh, it's only here in the New Testament, it doesn't occur in the Septuagint, it's late and it's very rare, it's made up from sulao, 
is a verb meaning to uh, to rob, in particular to um, despoil a, a corpse, to take um, take things from a corpse, generally in warfare. So you would kill somebody in warfare, and then you would take their their weapons and their armor, and then you've got the ago the ago root from ago here, meaning to take away. So it's often tr it can be translated as to take captive, or it's more literally to despoil, to take away, to rob someone of something, to despoil them of something. So beware lest there will be someone despoiling you uh, through philosophy uh, and empty, and then we've got to understand dear as well, and empty aparte deceit according to the paradosis this is the um, first the third declension feminine connected with paradidomi the tradition of men and according to the stoicheia the principles of the cosmos of the world and not according to christ um, yes yeah, stoicheia has the sense of principles it's a very technical philosophical word um, it's sort of rules and uh, well theory if you like uh, it's principles is probably the best way of translating it I think so the principles of the world and not according to Christ Hoti in auto katoi ke pan to pleroma tes the otetos somaticos. Kai este in auto pe pleromenoi hos estin he kefale passes arches kai exousias. Uh, because in him, and this is a very philosophical, theological sentence, you'll need to look at the commentaries on this, because in him, pantopleroma, all the fullness, and this pleroma, again, is a technical, philosophical word, all the fullness of the deity, this is a genitive from theotes, of the, of the deity, dwell uh, somaticos physically in bodily form. Again, you'll need to deal with commentaries on that one. Kai esti in auto peplerominoi. This is a, a um, periphrastic perfect here. Uh, so, you have been brought to fulfillment, I think is one way of translating this, in him. He who is the head of all Arkay, now we've had that, and exousia, now we've had those two words connected in chapter one, uh, of all um, authority, well, it's authority and rule, in all rule and authority. Whether this be spiritual or um, human is, again, a matter of debate. In ho, in whom also, peritmetete, now this is from peritemno, this is the aorist passive subjunctive from peritemno, which is to circumcise, literally to cut around. So in which also you ha have been circumcised, and then with a circumcision, there's the noun from that, peritome, a circumcision not made with hands, alpha privative, care, the hand, and the poio, uh, uh, do or make. So in which you have been circumcised with a circumcision not made by hands in the apecdusa. This is from apecdusa, one of these third declension feminine abstract nouns. It means, well, ecduo is to take off generally your clothes and apecduo to remove, to divest yourself. So it's, um, so, so in which also you've been circumcised with a circumcision not made with hands in the divesting of the body of the flesh. Well, perhaps all of the flesh of the body, of the fleshly body, probably metaphorically referring to the sinful body. 
So in the putting off of your physical body, of your fleshly body, in the circumcision of Christ, could be by the circumcision of Christ, sun tapentes auto in to baptismo in ho kai sun ergethe te dia tes pistios tes en ergeos to theu to egerantos auton ek necron. Um, the, this is an aorist passive, it's from sun, if you're looking this one up, this is from sun thapto. Thapto is to bury, and so this is being buried together with, you get a swapping of the uh, breathings. It was thap toe because um, of Grassman's law that I've talked about in earlier recordings. Um, you can't have two aspirates together, so the first one disappears. So, sun tapentes, aorist passive, um, participle from sun thapto. So, having been buried with him in the baptism, in which also. You have been raised from Sun Egero through the faith, the one, uh, the faith uh, in Egea, the faith which is working or operating. Uh, yeah, it's very slightly tricky expression here. So through the faith, and then we've got taste the faith in the perhaps it's the faith in the operation of God the one having raised from the Gero him ek necron from the dead and that's the first part of chapter 2